Oh, guys, I wanted to watch this with you guys. I don't know who the <laughs> f this streamer is. This is, I'm so happy. I was like, I'm forgetting something and I don't know what I'm forgetting, but I remember it was from the streamer awards. I don't know who this jinxy guy is. I don't know if he's based or cringe. I don't know anything about it. Um, I feel like he popped out, popped up out of nowhere. He's the new I show speed for 12 year olds. He's 22. He humped his chair when he won. So is he cringe or based? Guys, tell me, is he cringe or based? Cringe? He's like Tyler won for Zoomers. No! <laughs> That's cringe. Whatever, let's watch. It is jinxy. I was told to record this video just on the off chance that I were to somehow, by the grace of God, win an award. And here we are. Um, so if this video is playing right now, that is actually insane. But if it's not, that's cool too. Um, I just wanted to hop on here and say, I created my Twitch account in 2019. I spent 365 consecutive streams streaming to an audience of one viewer, okay? My goal with saying this is that anyone watching at home, anyone in the audience, anybody who comes across this clip, chase your fucking dreams. Because dreams without action will always just be dreams. I believe in each and every one of you motherfuckers to find your purpose, change the world, motivate others, inspire others. Get started today. As uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson once said, day one, fuck, I messed it up. One day or day one? Anyway, he's <laughs> anywhere, anywhere. Damn. Wow. Don't let your dreams be dreams. What was going on with his lips and jaw? I think that's the cringe thing. It's like he very clearly talks normally, but he does the fucking mouth thing and it feels very Zoomer. It feels very like YouTube cringe. It's like, stop. Please stop. Oh, God. But also my cringe radar is like, I'm very weak to cringe. Relative. But it's actually true. I mean, he kind of streamed on and off to like no one. And then streamed pretty consistently. I mean, this is like six days, six days, seven days, seven days, seven days. Like actually streaming almost every single day. And in the, what, like four months, he got 40 viewers, but he streamed to like under 10 for like oh, 70 days consistently, which is cool. He has Tourette's. Is it actually just Tourette's? I thought he was doing it on purpose to do like the Jim Carrey phase. I thought he was just doing the, just like the Jim Carrey phase. It is beige. One hundred percent Jim Carrey phase, yeah. I, if it's just his Tourette's, please, please, I apologize. But if he does it on purpose to do like the Jim Carrey vibe, I'm like, stop, stop. You're posting cringe. Stop. Makes that year seem even more rough, dude. When Valkyrie gave her speech, I didn't know she had been streaming for that long. I didn't know Valkyrie was streaming for that long. She obviously stopped and moved over to YouTube, but I did not know she started streaming in fucking 2016 or even earlier than that. Like, look, I mean, Twitch Tracker at the very least shows that she started in 2016 and streamed to like 500 viewers for a full year. And then over the course of like 2018, started rising up but that's crazy 2016 was 20 years ago stop stop that's cool that's cool twitch tracker slash denim yeah i was um Ew. 
I was pretty inconsistent in the early days. You can see my schedule is like all over the place and I stream sometimes and randomly in a month I might stream three days a week. Sometimes I would stream two days a week. Sometimes I would stream every single day. And then I started being more consistent about it. And then I realized I can't stream seven days a week. There's no way in f fucking hell. I am not, I am not Hassan. I cannot do that even if I wanted to. How do I, oh, there you go, copy link. So a lot of people ask me, Jinxie, why do you blink like that? And why do you blink so much? Why do you blink a lot? Um, I have Tourette syndrome, so it's like involuntary uh, motion in my face. I can't really control it at all, and I'm sorry about it, but yeah, it's just a part of me. Is that so? It's just the blinking, or is it other stuff? Because I know um, um, Ethan Klein is the same way. I always thought people who made fun of Ethan Klein's Tourette's were really fucking weird. Really fucking weird. Like, don't worry, Ethan Klein is enough of a weirdo that you can make fun of him for other things. Ethan has Tourette's? Yeah. Am I am I mistaken? I'm pretty sure he's talked about having Tourette's. Which is why, like, he, like, blinks and makes, like, the facial expressions that he does. Sometimes he has, like, his tics. Heartfelt, um, really serious apology was going on. And clearly, you can imagine that the dichotomy of those two things was not good. It was not good because, one... I actually really respect Cutie. I think uh This was crazy, by the way. This was crazy. That was so bad. When he pulled that shit, that was so bad. I'm trying to find like I don't remember where it is, but I think I feel like he made a video on it before. Maybe I'm wrong. Salads is uh, no stranger to He's a political provocateur. The guy has done fake pranks. It's it's he's talked about it a lot with um his eyebrows where he'd like will do this a lot. And I know sometimes he like lifts his jaw up a little bit. I just I always thought it was weird that people made fun of that. It seems like obviously very, very ableist. Very. What's up with his hair though? I don't fucking know. See, make fun of him for the hair choices. Look at this. This is disgusting. I don't know why he thought that this was a good look. This is, put that thing away. Why would you ever make your eyebrows so blonde? It's, it's fucking Eminem looking motherfucker. A lot of people are trying to give me an, a lot of people, my wife included, was saying, is this a Tourette's thing? I have Tourette's syndrome. And I don't think it is, right? Like, I, and that feels like a cop out, but I'm trying to understand why am I like this? And like, it's just kind of nuts how I keep doing these things. And I keep, uh, putting my, keep doing these horrible things, right? Saying these horrible things. I did not know this, but one of the symptoms of Tourette's here, I'll show you this. I'm just, I was like, fuck, I don't know. I've been thinking about it. And people say, maybe it's your Tourette's. And I say, I've always been like, that's, that's a cop out. There's no way. I'm just a fucking, I'm just crazy. I don't know even how to explain it. But then, so I said, okay, you know, with Tourette's, I, I've always kind of like buried my head in the sand. I know I have it, but since I was a kid, the more I thought about it, the, the worse it was. So my strategy of dealing with it was always kind of just to like forget that I have it or try not to think about it. Try not to. Dude, that was me with my OCD though. For real, for real. Some mental illness. Some mental illness you can kind of just ignore. And if you just pretend like it's not there, it'll go away because it's mild enough that you can just ignore it. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I, I got a little OCD, but I'm just going to pretend like I don't have it. I will simply look away. And that's fine. <laughs> and then it'll go away on its own. 
have it have a daily presence in my life <coughs> to try to feel like just normal as possible. And for the most part, I do find that that strategy worked. But I look up, you know, and one of the top results for symptoms of behavior is compulsive behavior, impulsivity. You know what I mean? Lack of restraint. And these are some of the top things that are being uh, listed. So I think it's a bit of a cop out. I don't think that I think I have control over these things. I feel I do. But I don't know, maybe it has something to do with it. Uh, I don't know, because I'm not really even sure how to describe it. And obviously, that doesn't absolve me of any blame, right? Like, I feel it's a cop-out. But maybe, I don't know how to describe I don't even know how to explain it. But I am very sorry to um, QD. And uh, I do feel horrible, and I, you know, support her 100%. And trying to get that stuff removed, the deep fake stuff. Did you know what to do? This is from a year ago. This is from a year ago. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. My temptation is to say, like, there's lots of people with Tourette's that aren't assholes and are very understanding people. I don't feel like Tourette's makes you into an asshole. But on the other hand, it's like, you know what? Maybe like, maybe it is a thing. Maybe the impulsivity really is just out of his control. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, you are still responsible for your actions, even if you do have to deal with um, any type of mental illness or disability or neurodivergence or whatever. Compulsive swearing is a real thing. Yeah, I mean, it, compulsive swearing is a real thing, but like, I don't think you start laughing at people's pain. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Telling your employer to play a soundbite is beyond impulsive. Yeah. When I think impulsive, I think like Sweet Anita having Tourette's and you've seen like her interviews and stuff where it is very clearly, it's completely out of her control. Completely, totally out of her control. But she's not an asshole, right? If And if she ever says something and it's like clearly the wrong context and she doesn't want it to come off the wrong way, she's like, she'll say, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. But I don't feel like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Telling someone to play like a, a soundbite, laughing at someone else and then laughing at the soundbite, laughing at someone else, is that is past just out of your control, I feel like. I feel like that is beyond <laughs> just the Tourette's. I don't know. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I could be wrong. It's possible that this is actually a very big problem for people who have Tourette's. I watched Anita since 2018. I love Sweet Anita. I just, I wish I could be her. I wish I could be her. This is a good example of her stuff. Who I like, like because women are great. Content you do? Uh, yeah, I'm Blau. Uh, I used to do GTA content. Now I pretend to do variety content. Awesome. How long did it take you to get ready, bitch? <laughs> um, I, uh, well, no, I'll keep going. Uh, probably took me about, um, oh, like 10 minutes, I think. Just about 10. 10 minutes? Are you kidding me? 10? How? How did this take 10 minutes? You look so good. Well, I mean, obviously, like, things like the nails took longer, but I had that done ahead of time. But, yeah, just quick 10 minutes, put on the suit, do the hair, um, try to make myself look like a Zoomer. Yeah. Did you, could you show everyone your nails? Look at his nails. So good. Beautiful. Bitch, um, can I tell everyone what you smell like? Yes, of course. Go for okay. it. Dick, it's dick. He doesn't smell dick. It's dick. It's dick. It's it's not dick. It's 
<laughs> um, you smell like a perfume. Do you know the name of the perfume you're wearing? Uh, but that's my point, right? Like, you have the Tourette's and it acts up and your body is like, no, 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 you need to say the word dick right now. Right now. But then she immediately corrects it and says, he doesn't smell like dick. No, 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 he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Let's just ignore that. <laughs> I feel like that's a different thing than like, hey, hey, play a laugh track over this person's suffering. <laughs> like that doesn't feel like. Uh, that doesn't feel involuntary. <laughs> that feels like a very voluntary thing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, suppressing a tick can be very painful. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think I'm wearing, uh, like, Giorgio Armani or something. I don't know. Very classy, very classy. And did you listen to any songs while you were getting ready today? Uh, yes, I listened to OMG by New Jeans so I can get more credit with the K-pop uh, stands on Twitter. What a bitch! I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck him. I'm so basically. <laughs> I, <forgot> my... <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> I love her so much. I I oh my gosh, it's great. It's so great. It's it's so wonderful. Oh my gosh. Whereas Anita probably always has had to instantly diffuse stuff by making it clear what her intent is. Yeah. I, I feel like she, she, it, there's never an instance where I feel like she means anything that she has said through her tics. Is it a bit or real? No, she, this is for anyone who doesn't know, uh, streamer sweet Anita. She's super great. She has, um, uh, what is it called? Tourette's and she just has in uncontrollable tics to physically move. <laughs> um, her face sometimes or her body sometimes and say things sometimes. I mean, I would, I imagine with, with uh, Tourette's, it's probably something that like you can control some of it and you can control a little bit of it, which is why I feel like during this interview, she hasn't had that many ticks, whereas on her stream she has all like maybe more but that's probably because when she's at home and she's very comfortable and she's streaming to people who know everything that's going on she doesn't really have to feel like she has to suppress as much whereas i assume because she knows she's doing a red carpet interview she's trying very hard to like suppress as much as she can so that she can get through her interview which is pretty cool i don't know i think it's like she says with, when she, she's focused, her ticks calm down. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought as well. Um, I also, th I also wanted to say another thing. I said it during the last Streamer Awards, but I want to say it again. It is very cool to see people with some form of disabilities or divergence in some way not be denied things just because of that disability because I think for most people most people who have Tourette's I don't think that they ever think that they would ever be able to do an interview it's like my disability I would never get hired to do something like this because of my disability and the fact that cutie got her on to do a, an interview is really cool That's really cool that like people, you know, aren't being denied the opportunity that other people get just because of her disability and that we can all be understanding and be like, yeah, it's just some, hey, you can't control it. It's totally fine, which is cool. It's cool to see that type of representation. I don't think we should be like hiding these people. And it's like, well, they, because of their disability, they can't speak in full sentences perfectly. And so we shouldn't, obviously, why would we have people like that doing interviews? It's like, no, I feel like people with disabilities should be more visible. And I feel like we should make this space for them and we should be understanding and recognize that does, that doesn't mean that they aren't allowed to share the same space that everyone does, that everyone else does. So that's cool.
Guys, why why is it always the lol users? Why is it always the lol users? Why is the Tourette people have oral jobs? Can't you just do work where oral is not the most important part? Question mark, question mark. It's not hiding when I look for a job. I look for the job I could be best at. Having bad eyesight is a disability. That would be great to be a fighter pilot. Why is there no representation for blind fighter pilots? Lol. It's always the lol users. Why is it always them? Why? Why is it always them? Oh my gosh. Hey, I don't know if you know this, but um, someone with Tourette's doing an interview isn't going to hurt anyone. And someone blind flying a plane could crash that plane and kill hundreds of people. There was no danger putting sweet Anita in front of a camera and a microphone. <laughs> She's doing it. And who's going to die because of that? Are you stupid? A blind fighter pilot would literally kill everyone around them. Obviously. You fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, no shit. We should have people who in, in instances where people could die. We don't have those people maybe doing certain things that could put other people's lives at risk. Anita literally said she can't drive and she rarely leaves her place. I'm not, I'm not advocating that's like, we should be able to get sweet Anita a driver's license. She should have a driver's license. And if she has ticks on the road, physical ticks, and she happens to kill a family of five, so be it. Like, I'm not, I'm just saying, I think it's okay for her to do an interview. I think it's okay, actually. <laughs> I don't think there's any danger in giving her a microphone, actually. <laughs> Almost like there's a difference between giving someone a mic at an awards show and giving someone powerful lethal weapons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nuance. What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> it's so stupid. Also, especially when you consider, like, she's a very, very sweet person. Sweet, Anita. <laughs> um, like, she's a very genuinely nice person and also um, very smart. And has also ta talked about her inability to have any other type of job. That she's never been able to have or hold down any job ever because her tics don't let her. Didn't you do an interview with Andy Bia? Did she? Did we ever watch it? Isn't the fighter pilot's job to kill a bunch of people? Like, come on. It's always the lull users who are old users who like the site for slurs and did not move on. Exactly. <laughs> oh, let's watch. Bitch. <gasps> Was that a tick? Yeah. <laughs> My name's Anthony Padilla, and I spent a day with Sweet Anita to uncover the truth about how becoming a popular Twitch streamer has had life-threatening consequences, how her undiagnosed Tourette's wrecked havoc on her life for 27 years, and how she's been able to turn the ticks that she was once mercilessly bullied for into the very thing that people celebrate about her now. Hello, Anita. Hello. You've dealt with some horrifying and violent stalkers. Yeah, I guess. What do you think it is about you that draws this kind of obsession? The easy answer is that if you're visible to a huge number of people, at least some of them are going to be weird. And I think that applies to anyone, even if they're not uh, -uh if they're not content creators, because even before I started making content, I used to have trouble with drawing the wrong kind of attention. I think that the Tourette's makes me seem vulnerable and accessible. Can you get into the numerous stalking encounters that you've had. Since being a content creator, there was a guy who became obsessed with me. He moved from some other country in Europe to live down the street from me. He'd wait in my back garden for me to leave the house and follow me. He would sit on my doorstep and just wait for me to open the front door and try to barge into my house. He would threaten to kill me in front of everyone on stream. The police weren't doing anything. I'd tell them and I'd show them screenshots and things. One time they...
the the stupidest part by the way was during this fucking dipshit americans i hate americans sometimes were telling her honey go get a gun uh the best safety you can get is a gun and she's like I have physical ticks from my Tourette's and you think putting a gun in my hand is a good idea. Are you fucking stupid? You. Sorry, let me take this sign off. Are you an idiot? Are you a fucking idiot? <laughs> like. Fucking Americans just think they can solve every problem with a fucking gun. Cancer, gun. Bills, gun. Someone cut in line, gun. They caught him and they frisked him and they got a knife off him and they just released him three minutes away from my house again. They kept promising to do some stuff and never did for so long. One time I walked down the stairs and he was looking through the letterbox. I started to pass. I was like, wait a minute. And I looked back. That were just his eyes through the letterbox. That I mean, is so creepy. Slowly. Ooh, you say that with a smile on your face and <laughs> I don't know so how you can say that with a smile on your face. I've been living this for years. Would you say you're desensitized to it? Yeah, totally. I used to be the kind of person who'd take a lot of security measures out of fear, but now it's just like putting on your sleep seatbelt. Like you don't put your seatbelt on because you're terrified that you're going to crash. You just do it just in case. Does that feel defeating at all, knowing that it is up to you and no one is there for you? That's been my whole life, but I'm sure I can handle it. I've gotten this far. I also feel like she's such a... This is bare social of me, but I also feel like such a kindred spirit with with her mentality about life where it's like hey i've gotten this far nothing stopped me yet i haven't had any circumstances stop me yet and i'm not gonna let it start happening now and i feel that i know it's parasocial but me too me fucking too i've gotten this far and we're still doing okay I can handle whatever whatever life throws at me. Thing that prevented you from having jobs and doing the things that you want to do, and it seems like it directly impacted your childhood, your schooling, everything. And then now you are celebrated for that very thing. And that's kind of weird too, because it, for me, it doesn't feel like an achievement. It's just a passive. The things that you don't choose about your life don't really define you. What you are, the way the ways that you decide to handle everything. My identity lies in how I handle my Tourette's, not the fact that I have it. I kind of feel like I can't take credit for my condition. All I can take credit for is how I managed to make that a good thing about my life rather than a bad thing. What was your childhood like? Up. My mom was not very well throughout most of my childhood. I was caring for her. I learned how to take care of myself very young. She couldn't earn. She wasn't getting a diagnosis. And the doctors wouldn't tell her what was wrong with her. This meant that there were huge periods of time on and off where we had no money, no food, and nowhere to live. So when she went away for a while, I had to live with my dad. And his wife assumed that every time I acted up or said anything inappropriate, I was attention seeking and needed to be punished. To the point where when I broke my arm, they thought that I was just attention seeking, so they didn't believe me. And my stepmom shook my broken arm to prove that I was just faking it. And it wasn't, and it fucked me up. A lot of people, when I first hit the scene of content creation, thought yeah. I was a compulsive liar. I could see some people thinking that there's no way that you could end up being a Twitch streamer with the story that you have. Yeah, maybe. But this is why, guys, Whenever people come out and say, like, hey, like, this is genuinely what I'm dealing with. Hey, you know, I am coming out to speak on something that has been very traumatizing for me. I feel like your default should be to believe people, because if you're wrong, you are the biggest fucking asshole on the planet. You are just a genuine asshole. Like, if someone tells me, I'm sorry, I have Tourette's, just please ignore anything that looks like a tick because it's probably a tick. I, if I was like, yeah, sure. And then I was wrong, I would be the biggest fucking asshole on the planet. I would much rather be naive and believe you and make that space for you until I have reason to believe otherwise then assume you're lying immediately.
People thought ammo faked being abused. It's just so dumb because like, if she is being abused and you aren't taking it seriously, you're a fucking piece of shit. And if she isn't and you're taking it seriously, it is what it is. Whatever. Sometimes people lie. It is what it is. But like this Red I have proof of. No home. At first, it started to just fall into disrepair, and there were loads, loads of holes and rats and things like that. And then we ended up losing that place and having nowhere to go for a while. So I lived in a field, and I lived in a treehouse, and we had homemade tents. And the treehouses would sway in the in the wind, and it was really high up. Like if you fall, you die. That's how high up these trees are. There was like a rope on the top and a rope on the bottom, and you just hold onto the top rope and then walk along the bottom rope to get from tree to tree. There were five people on it, and my mom went, "Um, I don't think that this rope's meant to take the weight of five people." And everyone at once just panicked and was like, oh, God. If it snapped, they'd all die. My friend was like, that's the perfect time to take a picture of them all. So there's all these people just like with their death face on, just clinging to the rope for dear life. You starved for weeks out in this field. I mean, we didn't have much money, so hunger was an issue. I remember us buying a bag of potatoes once and having to make it last for... I think it was a month. But after a while, people started bringing us stuff. So we had a tent that was just full of stored food. They made the mistake of putting all the chocolate in one bag. And I, w I was a little kid. Yeah. And I saw a bag of chocolate. Uh huh. So I ran away with it. And I, my cheeks were stuffed when they found me. And my mom was like, did you eat all the chocolate? And I was like. <laughs> when did you first experience <laughs> Hamster <remember>. arc. <laughs> she went squirrel mode. <laughs> she was like, I got to store this for the winter. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> Awesome radio, thank you for the rhyme. Also, hi, Nessa. The, the, my first word was not mum or dad. It was Michael Schusmack. <laughs> my memory of saying it was like, it was a tick. The first word I remember saying like compulsively to the point where it hurt not to. So I think I might have, might have been having ticks before I even learned how to speak. Uh -huh. My mom's pretty sure that was my first word and I said it obsessively and it really annoyed her. Why? Because she was like, you're not saying mom. Come on, just, just, just give me a mom. It's <laughs> three letters, okay? You didn't get diagnosed until you were 27. No. Were your ticks more mild before that? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. What was it? Because it seemed like it would be obvious, right? Like yeah. this person has Tourette's. You're saying Michael Schumacher whistling snapping your fingers and saying, I'll kill your dad, you would think that someone would say that's Tourette's. Yeah, the first time I went to the doctor about it, I think I was like 13. I took myself, I had like a little bit of a chicken wing tick going on. I was like, I didn't ask my arm to do that. I keep doing it, I can't stop, I don't know what it is. And he was like, do you think you have magical powers? And I was like, no. And he was like, do you hear voices? And I was like, no. Well, you seem sound of mind, so you're probably just attention seeking and you'll grow up. Basically in my 20s, I was like, listen, I'm not attention seeking, it's still here. Can we just find out what it is? They did a few brain scans and then they never got back to me and I got with my life for another five years, I want to say. It was still messing with my life really badly. So I went back to the doctor. I was like, hey, you know, we did those tests a while back. Can we keep doing them? Because I still want to know. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. And it's really annoying because she will say, she will talk about it. And she will talk about her experience being talked down to and being ignored and not having her issues taken seriously, especially as a woman. And there's always some fucking morons are like, um, honestly, everyone, regardless of gender, should be getting good doctors. It's like, you're just an idiot. You're just like a fucking idiot. You're just actually a complete moron. You have no idea what you're talking about. You, you don't even know why she, she, you don't even know why she potentially is saying this. And that's not even talking about the number of people, especially, especially women, but it also happens to men who are overweight or obese and they go to the doctor for something like that is causing them immense pain. And the doctor says, yeah, just, uh, you just need to lose some weight. Meanwhile, they have like fucking appendicitis or some shit. We diagnosed you with Tourette's. I was like, well, why didn't you tell me? I've been living, but I had an extra, this, I, 
What? But that day was like the best day of my life because I had an explanation. It wasn't like I needed therapy. It wasn't like I was to blame. And I felt guilty because there were times where my tics were really violent. I had a tic where I'd keep punching people. And oh my God. I, I got a boyfriend at the time. I kept doing it to him and I couldn't explain why. And I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I don't even know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. And he stayed with me for a year, not knowing why I hit him. Yes. Yeah. So what were some of your worst takes before the diagnosis? Things that people might be like, oh, obviously, it was clear that you had Tourette's. I shout, I'm a pedo. In fact, I did that when I met my ex's parents for the first time. I think that was like kind of the best and worst day of my life. <laughs> Walk into the house, I'm a oh, pedo. No, it was so much worse. I went to meet them uh. and my boyfriend at the time said, hey, can we not tell them that you have Tourette's? because it'll be funny. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I spank people as a tick as well. So like, I did not get to give that disclosure warning to the guy bending over, leaning into the frozen section at the supermarket. And I just randomly spanked this dude I didn't know right in front of them. And he stood up and he was really angry and he had his fist ready to go. Mm -hmm. Then he looked down at me and he was like, what do I do? I just took the moment of confusion as an escape route and I immediately turned to face my ex's parents. I'm bright red, I'm really embarrassed, which triggers ticks. So uh... we get out into the main street in front of everybody and I've been holding in my ticks as much as I can, can't anymore. And I just go, I'm a pedo! Just like really loudly. Everyone stopped and looked at me. And his brother and his dad had gone raspberry red and they were just like crawling on the floor laughing. But they didn't bring up, they just laughed at me. And on the drive home, my ex was like, by the way, my my girlfriend has threats. And I'm like, we kind of don't care. I'll have a tick roll, make a gesture from a man having a gamer moment. Once uh, a car stopped for me to let me cross the road, it's mom and dad in the front, the kids mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. And I just walk along that face. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like awkwardly fat walking along and just like making that gesture at them. And are you conscious of this action happening as you're doing it? Or is it sometimes just so natural that you don't even really notice? It, sometimes it just comes so naturally because I'm used to it and I know everyone's not giving a shit. So it's just like, oh, the wank thing happened anyways. Other times, I am forced to do it when I really don't want to do it. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no, stop. But like my body's just like, hello, random person. <laughs> so you said that uh, sometimes you're, was that a tick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You caught it though. Yeah, I always catch it. Everyone's yeah. like that. I, I dropped some broccoli in front of you earlier and caught it. Oh, was that a tick? Yeah. I thought it was a balance issue. Sometimes like I'll throw a cup and I'll throw it up and it'll land in my hand again. And it, all of the drink will land in the cup. And I'll be like, yes! That's You'll do a, a full 360 thing. with a, some with liquid a in it? And it'll, that's why I've got cups that have a good, that curve mm. inwards, because then you're less likely to spill it. Mm. I used to get spill-proof cups, but they don't work when you're drunk. And I drink a lot on stream. Drinking, have the ticks come out more or less, or does it affect anything? Soft. So interestingly, you're a bitch, and you're a bitch. Thank you. Nice tits. So I have tits, but not yours. <laughs> All facts, man. All facts. <laughs> <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> Does drinking bring it on? No, it turns down. Part of the condition is overproducing dick and uh, and dopamine. <laughs> dopamine. Overproducing dopamine and alcohol is a depressant. Mm -hmm. So I, I genuinely do feel different when I, I drink alcohol. Oh. The medications that are experimentally used for depression for Tourette's syndrome are depressants. And a lot of people don't like them and don't stick with them because yeah. they um, can make you not feel like yourself or they can just make you feel like a zombie. Oh. But I've just been fine to just leave my mind exactly how it is because it's not all bad and I'm not willing to sacrifice the way that I think just to stop swearing. I went to so many different schools only for a few weeks at a time. Yeah. Longest was a year. I didn't go to school anymore because ticks got me in trouble. Like they tried to spread rumors about me, just silly kid stuff. Mm -hmm. But I tick and agree with it. Mm, so you say yes, that's true. They go, do you do drugs? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then people go, see, I told you it was true. But sometimes I'd just be really offensive and people wouldn't know why. And I wouldn't know why. There was this one time where a guy, well, a few six formers when I was about 12, I said the wrong thing to them. I don't even remember what it was anymore. But they beat me unconscious, stamped on me, broke my fingers. And I woke up in the medical room. And I was like, there's no point in getting an education if I'm not going to survive to use it. So I went back out into home education again and I learned how to teach myself. Did anyone try to convince you that these bullies were just flirting with you? Oh, yeah. So apparently if a guy hits you, it's because he likes you when you're little, which isn't a good thing to teach good little girls. Mm. Nobody ever did anything about it. If I told a teacher, they'd be like, oh, he just likes you, he just likes you. But it taught me a lot of strange ideas of love. I ended up in an abusive relationship. He was nice for the first few years and then he got physical. By this time, I didn't know what love was supposed to look like. When 
ever I threatened to leave, he'd be like, well, who would treat you any differently? You're crazy. I kind of just didn't feel like I had any choice anymore. There was a pretty rough time. I ended up trying to end my life. They took me to the hospital. I started self-harming at the time. They got a plastic surgeon to try and reconstruct my arm because of the scars. They didn't think I'd gone in for a suicide attempt. They thought that I'd gone in for the, the self-harm. And I was like, no, 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 don't worry about that. Like, I'm, I'm here for something else. Yeah. And um, they assigned me some mental health help, but I was on a waiting list for a year before I got that. So I just got sent home to deal with my life for a year alone. After an attempt at your life, they say, go back to the place where you tried this. Mm -hmm. Did you feel tempted to try again? Yeah, but um, my ex was just following me and watching me like a hawk to try and make sure that I didn't again. I got it together, I found a place to escape, I collected sea glass on the beach, I sold it and I saved up the money and bought craft supplies, sold craft supplies online and just from zero, from literally no money, went from that to running a business where I was supporting myself and just got on with life. And did you kind of realize that the only way you would comfortably make a living is if you didn't have to worry about your Tourette's getting in the way of it? Yes, because if I worked in a store and I I just like threw a can of beans at his head, like there, there's no way I'm, I'm employable. The video of it would go viral. And by the way, this is why that one chatter that's like, lol, why are you putting someone with Tourette's in front of a camera? Maybe people with Tourette's shouldn't be doing oral jobs. It's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea, let her, let her work in a grocery store and start fucking flinging cans at children. That sounds like a good idea. No, 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 let her be a crossing guard and kill hundreds every day. No, that's a good idea. Maybe she should work in a factory and get some people chopped up by some fucking machine. Good idea. <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> Wonderful. Really thought that one through. <laughs> If anything, like being an influencer, like being an online content creator is probably the best because you can just, you can put a disclaimer before anyone even knows anything about you. Like when you go to her page, her, I'm pretty sure her bio literally says that she has Tourette's and she, you know, will do certain ticks and stuff. Whereas in the real world, you start doing shit. No one can, it's very hard to give a disclaimer before you do something. Because you, you, don't, you don't know. You don't know what the fuck your body is going to do, what it's going to force you to do. <laughs> when did you first start creating content and streaming? Four years ago now. Never intended to be in front of a camera in my life. I've been so embarrassed about my condition and I've always been accused of being an attention seeker. So the idea yeah. of like being in front of the camera and seeking attention seemed like confirming everyone's doubts about me growing up. I mean, I wouldn't even wear colorful clothes for most of my life because I felt like I'd be confirming that I was an attention seeker. And then I was playing computer games and somebody who streams started talking to me. I didn't know he was streaming mm. and he admitted it later. And he, I looked at his chat. And they were like, she's either a voice actor um, or a slut or, or a content creator and we've got to find her. They assumed it was because um, the way I was speaking and, you know, just the way I was interacting and making everyone laugh. When I read all those comments, I was like, if I do passively something that, you know, people actively try to be, why not give it a go? It was never about being a success. I didn't watch anyone else's streams. I didn't understand anything about streaming. So the fact that everyone was suddenly here felt like, oh God, now I have to take it seriously and now yeah. I don't know what to do. You didn't choose to be successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it fell on my lap by accident. What propels you into the popularity that you see today? Is it bad that I don't know? You don't know why people are there? No, I have no idea. I think one of the things that really helped me get a lot of exposure was because Kotaku hates me. There was this lady and she interviews me and she acted like my biggest fan and she asked me loads of questions. She was really fun and supportive. And at the end she was like, so what do you think of the people who say you're fake? And I'm like, eh, I thought my condition was fake when I was younger, I can understand. And then and she was like, well, what do you say about, you know, experts saying Saying that you're wrong and does anyone else in do your mods think you're fake all this sort of stuff she really went into it she's like you're gonna have to send me your medical records i was like no i'm not giving you my medical records she then got in contact with me a day before the article and went last chance to send me those medical records and i was like it's still a no and she published the story anyway but then she said loads of stuff that i hadn't said she claimed that i'd told her that i had 200 chinchillas she would abbreviate situations so that it seemed more absurd she claims that her mother got a debilitating illness from a volcano in africa she has two 
200 chinchillas, but declined to show me any pictures of them. And all of these really, really strange trying things. Trying to paint you as a liar. a liar. That article made a lot of people come to my stream. So in a roundabout way, despite what she was trying to do to me, I ended up winning in the end. So I just, I cannot bring myself to care what people think of me anymore. And it's so freeing. Was there a... I mean... Can I say, as someone who does enjoy watching her streams, I don't even watch a lot of streams. I do not. Um, I'm more of a YouTube girly. I won't lie. I will be honest with you guys. I'm sorry. I'm a fake Twitch fan. I'm, I'm a fake Twitch fan. Please forgive me. Please. But I enjoy watching her stream, and for me... If I enjoy watching your stream, that is incredible. You have an amazing stream. In my opinion. Because I don't watch that many streams. So if I think your stream is good, your stream is probably really good. And I think for her, I think a lot of people like her stream because she has a really nice voice. It's really nice to listen to her. It, 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 I'm never annoyed by anything that she does. Like she doesn't say anything that or speak in a way that like is grating at all ever, which is in insane because I feel like everyone has times where they sound just more annoying. Um, and also I think that her personality really shines through, even if she isn't trying to make it shine through, I think it comes out and I think people can see the genuineness. Like she's very clearly had a hard life and it has shaped her into the person that she is now. And I think that other people can see that. I think other people can see that she does not... Um, she doesn't sweat the small stuff. Like... She feels very wise beyond her years because she's been forced to deal with so much. And I think in addition, um, someone said she's really charismatic, that's for sure. I think in addition, when you're getting told, no, you don't have Tourette's, you're just being attention seeking. No, you don't have Tourette's, like it must be something else. I think you end up having to spend a lot of your time trying your hardest to be as pleasant as possible and to be as charismatic as possible to sort of like overcome the fact that everyone around you thinks that you're just doing stuff for attention. And I think it forces you to become this very humble person. And even after getting the diagnosis, she still feels that way. Like she still acts that way. And I think that that comes through on the camera. I think it comes through on the camera that she she's a very genuine person and she's pleasant to listen to and I think a lot of the circumstances that she was in made her into the person that she is. Like the fact that she couldn't go to school Because her Tourette's made it impossible to go to school. She could, she could not go to school. It was not possible. It was literally dangerous for her to do so. So she said she had to learn how to learn at home. And I will tell you, learning how to learn by yourself is one of the most valuable things. Because there are a lot of people who don't know how to learn. There's a lot of people that I've run into who their methods for figuring out information are not great. Which is why some people, there are so many people that are like fucking QAnon honors. And it's because they don't know what the fuck they're looking at. They see some random ass blog on the internet being like, bro, it all makes sense. Where one go, all of us go. We, it's Trump baby 2022. We got to do that. It's like, dude, you are insane. <laughs> You're crazy. And you have no idea. You're actually crazy. But when you have to 
learn all by yourself and you don't want to look like an idiot. You actually have to sit there and read fucking papers and actually understand things because you don't want to feel stupid next to everyone else. You, you didn't get to ha have a formal education. Oh, Ambrose. Guys, 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 I didn't even know this was a lol user. I didn't even know this was a lol user. Why? Why is it all of them? Why is it all of them? Me too. Tick. Boom. UPS employee coming into property. Gun. Wink. Wink. You are so beautiful. Brain is gorgeous. Have a good day. Back to work. Well, duh, she's an American, which isn't as blinded as y'all are here watching. I just want to understand. I just want to understand. I just don't understand. We need to do a clinical like study on lol users. I, I stand by my 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 statement. There's something there's something about the average lol user. For a moment when you realized, oh shit, I could be doing this full time. Yeah, and at that time I still didn't stop renting my office because I felt like everyone was gonna hate me tomorrow or I would get can I get cancel anxiety over nothing. My memory's terrible, but I'm pretty sure yeah. I haven't done anything cancelable. Mm. But I'll still get cancel anxiety and I'll still think like my job could be out the window tomorrow. Is that because you think that you're gonna have a tick that is cancelable? Oh, I've already done that. Um, <laughs> I, I've had the N-word tick for like three or four years and mm. people would clip it out of context to go, look, this bitch is promoting racism for money. And they wouldn't even mention I had Tourette syndrome. Oh, that's an unimportant detail. Yeah, they'll just, they'll just leave that out and let me deal with the hate. Aside from that, though, I keep feeling like one day... If By the way, this is the only instance where it is okay to be white and say the N-word. When, like, you literally have Tourette's and you can't stop it. Like, you are trying your hardest to not stop it. You're in physical pain. And you're like... Oh my God. Cause you know, she doesn't want to be saying it. You know, she doesn't want to say it. Oh, is she mixed? I didn't know that. I, okay. Being white presenting, excuse me. I didn't know that she was mixed. I, I have no idea. I, I just know her stream and I know watching her stream is very enjoyable. And I know that she's a very genuine person. Okay, so she does actually get the pass. She can say as much as she wants. No, no, no. But uh, I mean, uh, this is such a difficult conversation. This is such a difficult conversation. But the TLDR being, if she was white, let's just talk about it. If she was white, evidently she's not. I didn't know. I didn't even know that. Um, I think that's the one instance where it's probably okay. When you physically can't stop yourself, you are trying your absolute hardest to stop yourself from saying it. And you can't. Yeah, I think that that's the acceptable time. That's it. <laughs> that's the only one. If there ever was an acceptable time, that's the only one. I'm white and I'm in physical pain, not because I have Tourette's, but because I'm racist. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Oh. oh, gosh. Also, I think I assume that it's similar to even just like normal day-to-day -day life. I imagine the more you don't want to say that word, the more it happens. <laughs> Which is probably not fun. <laughs> it's probably really not fun. Oh. 
everyone's gonna just not give a shit about my content or whatever. Yeah. Content creation is like such a vulnerable job yeah. because you rely on the whims of the public and they're not very rational people. What kind of unexpected fears and dangers come along with being a popular streamer? I am a living cautionary tale. They will try to find you and harass you. People will latch onto you and become obsessed with you. It will become impossible to do basic things that you took for granted. You'll never know whether people are trying to get close to you because they like you or your social currency. Was there a huge shift in your financial security since becoming popular? Hell yeah. I was only just starting to dig my way out of debt. I had a habit of taking on animals I couldn't afford. Mm. So I'd be like, well, overdraft fees won't kill me, but not getting veterinary care for this hedgehog will kill the hedgehog. Mm. So I guess we're living off beans. I would end up thousands of pounds in debt and I was just clawing myself out of that when I found content creations. I definitely have been able to help my mom and pay for her care and be able to do things I never even dreamt of doing. I've never left the country before mm -hmm. until I started doing content creation. Never thought I'd ever be able to afford to. Waxing a viewer's balls. Huh? Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I usually ask any creator that I interview, what was your most awkward or bizarre fan interaction? I waxed the guy's balls. Um, before we get more into that. What was the most weird fan interaction? You know what's crazy? I have never had a weird fan interaction. All of you have always been so normal. I'm serious. I'm totally serious. I'm sure eventually it'll happen. Um, but everyone's always been very normal. I honestly, it kind of, blows my mind that I get to be the one lucky content creator that has so many normal people in their community. Because I think one of the things that's very scary, and I've, I've had a lot of friends who've had to deal with that, or what I'm about to discuss, um, but I've had a lot of friends, especially female friends, but it happens to male content creators as well, where there's like, a fan that's sort of hovering and they don't know that they aren't like friends with the content creator and so they just sort of start following the content creator and that's pretty scary at like conventions yeah I saw one of the weirdest interactions of my life for this person's privacy, I'm not going to mention their name, but a, a content creator friend of mine had someone come up to her and was like, hey, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, you're so pretty, blah, blah, blah. Like, um, I would love to get like a picture. Uh, and she was like, yeah, of course, sure. And after that, he was like, yeah, you know, could I get a hug? Where's my hug? And I think a lot of people ask for hugs, so I think a lot of female content creators are a little bit used to it, which is fine. And then he goes in for the hug, and I am in the terrible position, by the way, guys, where I can see his face. I see my friend's back in front of me, and I see his face. And I know that this is mean and this is wrong, but he was enjoying that hug too much. Like, if I could show you what the hug looked like, it was like this. And, and you have to understand, from my position, I don't know what's happening in my life. <laughs> from my position, what I'm, what I'm seeing is like someone who's seeing this content creator for the first time. And he goes in for the hug and he's like rubbing her back and he makes this face. I'm going to do my best to make it. Obviously, I can't see my face for what I'm about to do, but he's like, and I'm just like
And luckily she had some security with her. So I like, I just like grab her security and I'm like, hey, like, I, I don't know what's happening in front of me, but I'm a little scared. I'm a little bit scared. So just uh, watch if you could. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is what you, what you were hired for. And then um, he, he asks for her Instagram from her assistant. And he's like, yeah, you know, like, what's her Instagram? And then, um, she gives him the Instagram. So he's like trying to pretend like he doesn't know her. And then even though it just happened, like just barely happened. He walks up to her and is like, yeah, could I get your Instagram? And her assistant is like, hey, I just gave it to you. And he's like, oh, yeah. Basically, at this point, he's just trying to extend the conversation for as long as he can because he wants to keep talking to her. And then over the course of like the next minute, he asks for five more hugs. And she's very sweet. And unfortunately, especially as a female content creator, you have to be very nice because these people will like, some people will just go insane on you. Like some people will go full blown insane on you. And you don't want stalkers. So if you can just leave on an amicable note, you just prefer to do that. And you opt to do that. Like it was like, oh yeah, you know, hug. Talks about Instagram for two seconds. Can I get a hug? Talks about whatever for two seconds. And then like, we're about it. We're like, okay, bye. And he's like, oh, just like one more thing. And he's like, I can see him trying to come up with something to say, like a reason to extend the conversation and he can't come up with anything. And so he's like, uh, can, we, can I just get like one more hug? Goodbye. And I'm like, like, again, I, I'm just like watching this happen. I'm like, I'm so glad there's security here. I'm so glad. I'm really happy that there's security. And the security guard's like, yeah, okay, well, we're really busy. We have to go, you know, like, we have to go to some meetings and stuff, but uh, thanks, you know, have a great time. And he, like, kind of, like, makes that space. And I'm like, but I've also, I, I've known women who've talked to me about, like, Maybe less insane fan interactions, by the way. Maybe slightly less insane fan interactions. Um, where it's just been like a person kind of following you at the convention because maybe they walked up to you when you were running a booth or something and then they just kept hovering and then they just kept hovering. Because it's like, yeah, I'm one of you guys, right? I'm not going to say anything, but I'm just going to kind of hover. I've had people follow me around and it's never not weird. Dear Slim, I wrote to you, but you still ain't calling. <laughs> Whereas, how do I say that I have never experienced anything even remotely weird? Every single person who has ever approached me ever at a convention has always been very polite, has always, you know, said, sorry if I'm interrupting anything or you're busy, just let me know if you have to go. Like very clearly gave me a way to say, I don't want to continue this interaction. Um, everyone's been really polite. Everyone who's asked for pictures has always been like, it's okay if you don't uh, like want to take pictures or whatever, but if you do, I would love one. Like, not forcing me to do anything I don't want to do. And then, like, very classy, in a very classy way, saying, okay, Where well... <laughs> stop. <laughs> but in a very classy way, every single person who's ever approached me at any convention ever has been like, okay, well, I want you to enjoy your convention. Uh, so, but thank you for taking the time out. Um, yes, I don't want to bother you any longer. Okay, have a good, have a good day. Thank you again. 
everyone's been so nice and they just they they initiate the exit of the conversation and that's really cool i i can't believe i'm so lucky that everyone is so normal that's just amazing it makes me want to cry actually like genuinely i i don't know what i did to deserve this but um do you want the poster I drew? Haha, <laughs> okay, bye. Dude, Mumblecat, I have it. I, oh, you can't even see it. Oh, because I stored it somewhere safe. I think safe stored in here. Where did I save it? So I had it on like one of my posters, which you can't see on the wall right now. But then I was like, that's such a dangerous place because. I want to maintain it. Um, and I think I put it somewhere that I thought would be safe, which makes me think I put it in my binder. Probably because I didn't want something bad to happen to it. So it's actually probably somewhere very safe <laughs> that I don't even fucking remember. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's, it's definitely in a binder. 100%. 100%. Because it gave me so much anxiety. I, I wish I could show you guys, but like, I, it doesn't show up on camera. You guys see like the frame that's right there? It's right over there, right above the tea maker. It was there for a while and I just kept getting nervous that something bad was going to happen to it. And I was like, I'm just going to put it somewhere nice. It's okay, you can shred it if you want. Are you crazy? I wouldn't, no, I would never do something like that. Are you insane? No. I even, I even keep like, I'm surprised, I thought I put it in here. Oh, wait. Guys, look at what Mumble Cat made. Isn't this so cool? Isn't this so cool? See, I told you. I even keep any like nice notes that people have given me or anything like that. Um, I wanted to keep it somewhere close, but somewhere safe, which is why it's in here with the tea, because I also want my tea to be safe. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, huge shout out. Just, that's all. Just huge shout out to you guys. You guys are so cool, so normal. I've never felt so blessed to have such normal people. I, I'm genuinely kind of shocked. Really kind of shocked. Like the weirdest interaction that I've ever had has been like, maybe someone a little shy. Maybe someone just a little shy being like, sorry if I'm bothering you. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I just want to, I want to get a picture if I can, but it's okay if you don't want it, it's okay. Like, that's like the worst thing that I've ever gotten, which is so sweet. <laughs> like, that's not, anyway, that's all. That's all. That's, that's... So huge shout out, huge shout out. Very cool. Very cool and pug. I said hi to Miskiff at TwitchCon. He said, what? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you, give, you give people the energy they give you. No, I didn't, Domino. Uh, uh, people shy. People shy. What's your opinion on Short Kings? Short Kings are based. Short Kings are so based. The only thing that makes you cringe is being embarrassed that you're short. If you're embarrassed that you're short, like, and you show it off, like, it's very clearly something that, like, if someone, if someone made a joke at your expense, you would, like, go full serious and be like, you know, not all of us can be tall. Nah. <laughs> you're way too... No, no, no. You can't be. You can't act like that, man. But if someone says, 
you short. And you're like, yeah, I'm shorter than you and I get more pussy. <laughs> What's your fucking excuse? Oh, that is the coolest thing you could do. You are immediately so much cooler than everyone else in the room. The fact that someone else could make a joke at your expense and you could play off of it and not give a fuck. Even if like internally there is still a little bit of like, oh yeah, I am still a little self-conscious about it, but I'm not going to let it get to me. Because I think it's normal. Everybody's a little self-conscious. I'm self-conscious about things, but you just don't let them get to you because it, you it's worse. It's worse to let them get to you. You just recognize, yeah, maybe I wish I was a little taller, but it's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to spend my whole life being sad about this. You get what you get and you just, you do the best you can with it. And being confident about it is just so much cooler. It's so much cooler. Hey girl, guess what? You can be the big spoon. I'll be, I'll be a little jet pack for you in bed. When we're cuddling. Mm hmm So cool. So cool. I'm so oh, I'm spending my whole life sad that I wasn't born six foot nine with a massive fucking cock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's also more impressive to be a confident short king than it is to be a confident tall dude. It's just objectively, it's more impressive. Because it's not hard, like, it's, you have it so much easier if you're, like, tall and decently attractive. Of course you're going to be confident. Or of course you're going to be more confident. If you can be confident despite being at, like, a quote-unquote social disadvantage, so much cooler. So much cooler. Tyrion Lannister thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the king part is earned. Yeah, yeah. Just know, anytime I say manlit, I am specifically describing the very cringe type of dude who blames all of his problems on women and thinks that the his height is the reason why he will never be happy. Ben Shapiro is a manlet. You're insecure and you're toxic and you take it out on other people. Versus being a short king, which is a completely different person. Manlet does not equal short king. Versus short king, we're like, maybe you're a little insecure about it. But that doesn't stop you from having a good time. And at the end of the day, you're going to be the coolest person that you know. And you, yeah, you're not going to care about it. You're not going to waste your time fucking caring about something so stupid. You should care about the things that are in your control, not the things that aren't in your control. And if anyone is like, um, I'm sorry, I wouldn't date someone that's under a 5'10". Just call them shallow and move on. Fuck them. Are you kidding me? The trash is taking itself out. You should be grateful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Fuck those people. I prefer sh short surfs, <laughs> personally, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways. That's just my opinion. The hilarious thing is it's always the 5'2 girlies. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> it's so dumb. It, height is just such a stupid... metric for dating someone. Oh, you can reach the top shelf. I can go on Amazon and get a, a ladder for $20. A portable small one for $20. I don't need someone that's a little taller than me. What is, what's the purpose? Huh? Oh, you can hit your head on doorways. Congrats. Oh, the, the, all your beds are too small for you and all of your fucking showers are too short for you. Oh, anytime you guys want to 
be able to get in each other's cars, you have to readjust it. Wow, isn't that so convenient? I love that. That's great. That is the best part. Like, <laughs> what is the... What, what, there is nothing intrinsically cool about it. Like, it's just a quality. It's, a, it's just like a neutral quality. This hurts. <laughs> you know what's sexy? Fitting comfortably into economy <laughs> uh, class on a flight? Yeah. So, yeah. Listen, if he doesn't fit in a Japanese K-truck, what's the point? What? <laughs> Oh gosh. No, but it, it, like in all honesty, it's like, it just does, it's not, it's not, it's just not a quality that I've ever cared about. It's like, it's not an important quality. It's the, that feels like, that feels like on the same level of like stupid as, oh, I want to date someone with a specific eye color. Like, oh, I only think uh, women with green eyes are pretty. Or I only think men with green eyes are pretty. It's like, it's so dumb. You're going to build a relationship off of that? You're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. You're a fucking moron. Oh my God. That is such a, that is like the worst way to find a partner. You're going to build it off of completely innate things. That's what you're going to build your relationship off of. That's what you're going to date. You care about things that people put in zero effort or work into? That is so dumb. Oh, my God. I'm not even that, that short, but tall women have definitely denied me for it. Got to be 6'5 plus, bro. Yeah. Hey, Belong. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Preach it. Yeah. That's some Aryan type shit. Yeah. Versus, like, honestly, I can see hair color. I can see having a hair color preference. But, like, you can easily change hair colors and stuff. Like, I've met people who are like, dude, pink hair is just... It's so chef's kiss. It's not, like, the end-all be-all, but, like, that's so chef's kiss. I think that's fair. Because at the end of the day, you, you, you can change your hair and you can do fun stuff with it. So I can understand wanting to date someone else who does fun stuff with their hair, especially if you like to do fun stuff with your hair. Like if you like to get a buzz cut sometimes or you like to get like half shaved and you think a specific cut looks cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. Anyways. I just don't get the, I, I, I just don't get the, I am not going to date you because you do not meet this qualifier that you have no control over. Like excluding people from the pool. That doesn't make any sense. It's so, it's so bizarre to me. You're, you're not even going to talk to a person or consider it. because you don't want to be taller than that person? Like, don't get me wrong, though. Don't get me wrong. I would never date a manlet. I would never date a dude that told me to take my heels off because I would be too much taller than them. That's manlet behavior. That is not acceptable. You're not telling me how high my heels can be. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> then you gotta go. You gotta... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Manlin is a state of mind. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But at that point, it's a personality thing.
<laughs> Manlets don't want heels longer than his dick. <laughs> I had a guy try and make me wear flats and it was so weird because he was taller than me anyways, but with heels, I was a little taller than him and it made him so mad. So weird. Why wouldn't you want to date like a fucking Amazonian princess? Why, why wouldn't you want a wife that you can climb like a tree? Why? If, if, and, and I'm going to go further. Okay. If you tell your girlfriend to take off her heels because it makes her too much, it makes her too tall. You are just as bad as the women who disqualify men for being too short. Just own that shit, man. Just own it. Own it. I definitely want a wife that can catch rebounds over me. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Ask them for piggyback rides. Exactly, okay. Let's finish this video. Let's finish this video. At, I want to let you know that you can watch the last time that we had Anita on I Spent a Day with People with Tourette's Syndrome here on YouTube or on the completely uncensored podcast version of this show by clicking the link down in the description below. And I now, back to the world of Sweet Anita. I waxed the guy's balls. You um, waxed the guy's balls? Yes. Um. I waxed a few his balls. For, um, for, uh, I'm guessing that wasn't a tick. No. How did the, that, how did the balls get waxed? End up Very getting, painfully. Getting waxed? I drew blood. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't ask someone with threats to wax your balls. How did that end up uh, happening? That sounds I played terrifying. computer games with my viewers. Mm -hmm. Me and two other viewers were very drunk. This viewer said, if you clutch this and win this round of Apex, I will let Sweet Anita wax my balls. That was for you? <laughs> I had no part in this suggestion whatsoever. <laughs> I'd never even thought about waxing anyone's balls before. But as soon as you said it, I'd be like, now that sounds like content. Me and this. <laughs> Content brain, yes. That is the one thing all content creators have in common, which is we can respect some fucking content brain. Okay? The only difference between the shitty streamers and the good streamers is that the shitty streamers have content brain, even if it's at other people's harm, whereas the really pogger streamers have content brain, so long as it's not hurting anyone. So they will do the craziest shit that they can do, the craziest shit that will get views and get clicks, but they don't want anyone to be harmed. I don't know. A man waxing his balls is pretty harmful. Hey, he signed up for it and he requested it. That's pretty fucking consensual to me. I don't know what could be more consensual. other viewer were strongly assured that this was just a joke because there's no way he could win but he won well, what was the conversation like hey i won i was serious he won and then he joked about it because it happened in front of a bunch of people he joked about it to a lot of my other viewers yeah. in my community my discord community yeah they were all laughing and saying you owe him a, a ball waxing is it real is it gonna happen i was like mm. yeah if, he, if he's brave enough and i was so sure he was not brave enough so the guy came to my house turns out he's very brave and has very tiny balls balls just need to be waxed they do. And who's gonna do it if not Sweet Anita? And I can give you a spank on the way out too. So mm. if you if you need a ball waxing, hit me up. I that is hilarious. That much. You have no idea how many people are in your DMs right now. I'd rather that than the dicks. That is what hilarious. What are the questions the that way? we get asked every single video? Okay, sorry. I'm not as um, brave as Sweet Anita is. I am not doing ball waxing services ever. That's not happening. I would just like to put it out there. I would just like to put it out there really quickly. That's not going to occur. <laughs> There's a lot I would be willing. I don't know about waxing someone's balls personally. Then it's please. <laughs>
I know that there are a lot of women who have like the dommy mommy stuff where they're like, haha, I'm going to step on you. I get it. Okay. I can understand that. The people who are like, yeah, walk me on a leash. I'm like, okay, we're entering weird territory, but maybe ball waxing. I just, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I, I am not brave enough to wax a man's balls. I'm not. I could never. You're going to be able to guess what demographic. Okay. What I'll, I'll, okay. I'll try to envision the type of person asking Everyone, each of these questions. You the do you tick when you sleep? Do you tick during sex? Can you still give blowjobs? You ever had a tick fart? <laughs> okay. These are all the same type of person. Mm -hmm. Do you deal with people fetishizing your tick? Yes. Um, I did not expect me offering to f people's dads to make people so horny. And that's why you now have a tick where you call people cucks. Shut up, cuck. Sorry. <laughs> there are a lot more cooks than I thought there would be in mm -hmm. the world, but aside I like the the captions keep saying cock instead of cuck. From learning There's that. There's a lot more people's... cock in the world than I thought. So um been very much fetishized my whole life. I've never met a woman who says such dirty words. And they're just not used to the swearing. And also a lot of people think that it's what I'm thinking about and they just think that I'm horny all the time. Once I got in a taxi. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm sorry, I have Tourette's syndrome. If I say anything inappropriate, I'm really sorry. And he was like, oh, don't worry. I'm an, I, I, I have a bit of an imagination too. You know, I watch anime and I was like, all right, just let me out here. I think he meant hentai, honestly. Oh, I think that he, that's definitely what he meant. Don't worry, I'm nerdy too, baby. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, nope. You've said that no one believes you when you talk about your sexuality. I am demisexual. Basically, I don't feel attraction to people physically. I'm completely indifferent to bodies, and I've never felt physically attracted to anyone I didn't know. A lot of people just don't believe me, partly because of the tics and how lewd they can be. Um, other people just don't think that's a thing. What do you think the biggest misconception is about you? My dick, my dick, my dick, my dick, and dick, and dick, and dick, and dick, and dick. Um, Aside from how horny I am, mm -hmm. obviously. When I ask, why are you still here? Why are you watching my content? People say, hey, I came for the ticks and I stayed for mm -hmm. the personality and I stayed for what you have to say because mm -hmm. I didn't expect you to make content beyond your condition. So I guess a lot of people just think that my content is my Tourette's. I talk about all sorts of things and I talk about anything from handling grief to where the clitoris is. Two very important sides of the spectrum. Yeah, I think you both are in life. Though. I think people don't expect me to have any opinions and they don't think that I'm gonna say anything of value. They're just waiting to laugh at the next tick. All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly into camera. So. I'll set you up here. I'll set up your dad, you bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I did need some chapstick. <laughs> hey, I'm on TikTok. Dude, she's talked about, the video basically is over. Oh wait. I don't know if there's any more, but let me let me let the video play. Talk. I am on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, and probably a bunch of other places I've forgotten about. Would you feel comfortable encouraging people to subscribe to my channel? Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> subscribe to this dude. He's gay. He's gay. He sells cats for money. Um, <laughs> and he has a great channel. <laughs> well, there you have it. I spent a day with Sweet Anita, and one thing that really resonates with me is her notion that you can't hide from anything within. Whoever you are underneath it all, regardless of how much you try to suppress it, wants to present itself. And sometimes that suppression is the very thing that prevents us from feeling like we're truly living. So true, King. Uh, yeah. Dude, someone, she talked about how she hates flying because flying is such a nightmare because they never want to accommodate for her disability because they don't believe her and they don't believe that she has Tourette's and there were so many people being like what the fuck would you even need a disability seat for why would you need a disability seat it sounds like you just want special treatment it's like maybe she doesn't want to randomly start punching the people next to her or slapping them or throwing things at them I don't know so she's not disturbing the other people on the plane? Oh, majority report. Thank you guys for the raid. Thank you. Welcome, guys. Welcome. We were just talking about ticks. But yeah, I also just have like a lot of respect um, for her and also people like Cutie who put her in. <clears throat> 
in front of the camera and give her opportunities to shine because I think it does a really good job um, informing people about disabilities. And I think we should, we have a lot of poor understandings. We have, we sorry, we collectively, I think we have a poor understanding of a lot of disabilities because disabilities are so hidden and we make people feel so bad about them. And we make people feel like ashamed, even though it's completely out of their fucking control. So I think it's cool that we get to give more opportunities to people who are disabled and give them visibility. Because I will say, I didn't know that much about Tourette's. I did not. I did not know that much about Tourette's. And I feel like I've learned so much just even just existing in the same space where there is a content creator who tells people about it. And is like, I don't mind if anyone is laughing. I would much rather bring joy from my Tourette's. And we can all laugh together at the fact that I can't stop saying dick. And maybe along the way, you can learn more about what it's like to have Tourette's. That's amazing. That would be amazing. And we should have that much representation and that much normalization. Hi, people. Dini, thank you for the gifts of... And Paradox, thank you for the five gifts of you. Thank you, guys. That's really nice. That's really nice of you guys. Kept nice. Thank you for the 25 months. Thank you. I have a hidden disability. And yeah, when I talk about disability justice and accessibility, people are like, question mark, why? Because I don't look disabled. Yeah. Yeah. I am so glad that I've never been that, like, I'm glad that I was lucky enough to learn about disabilities early enough that I've never been the person that said, well, you don't look disabled. Because you know all the people who've said that, they're just ignorant. They're just ignorant. They don't understand that hidden disabilities are still disabilities. And you are a fucking asshole to assume that someone is lying about their disability. Unless it's very obvious, very obvious that someone is pretending to be disabled. And when I say very obvious, I mean as obvious as you can make it. Okay, whatever that means to you. You should just assume people aren't lying. Like the, the, the COVID, the, the people who are like, guys, the vaccine did this to me. The, the vaccine did this to me. It's like, it's so weird that the vaccine is only doing that to white women. That's so weird. That's so weird that you are, that's crazy. That's wow. That's insane. So yeah, I think in those instances where it's like these people have video footage of them before and after those videos without any shaking. Or, or do you guys remember the, the one where it was like the lady where she's like, yeah, ever since I got vaccinated, my hand is just always shaking. It's always shaking. And then she reaches for a can of beer and then suddenly her hand is completely stable and she takes a sip and she puts it back down. She's like, and now my hand just won't stop shaking anymore. I don't know why it's doing this. It's like, I, what? It's crazy that it stopped shaking as soon as you picked up something to drink. That's insane to me. That's wild. That's really wild, actually. That's crazy. Wow. Beer cures Parkinson's? Didn't know that. She doesn't want to shaky the Coke. Yeah. <laughs> Rune Manic, thank you for the 23 months. Thank you. Anyways, that's all. Like those people, yeah, we're allowed to say, you are not fucking disabled. You are very clearly lying. You very clearly are bullshitting. This is not a real side effect. You are just being a fucking literal paid actor. Stop. Every, in all other instances, in all other instances, just assume that they're not lying, right? Just assume they're not lying. See, thank you for the gifts of Fog Ramen. Thank you for the three months. Thank you, guys. Or sorry, three gifties. Sorry, thank you. I have disability to bang your mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
maybe it's my social anxiety. I would just feel so awkward. I'd feel so awkward realizing that I told someone who was disabled that they weren't disabled. I would be so embarrassed. I'd be like, please don't look at me. Oh my God. Oh my God, please don't look at me. I'm an awful person. I am a terrible person. I'm so awful. Oh God. Have a little shame, guys. Have a little shame. I don't need to tell you guys. You guys already know this. We're we all here with some anxiety. We all here with some anxiety. Oh, 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 oh